What was your ugly from from the Clemson? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. With a bowl ed- edition, we're gonna add a little bowl uh, SEC bowl into our good, bad, and ugly. But go ahead with your Alabama first. Uh, my Alabama first. I have to go with the officiating from the uh, Orange Bowl. I mean, how how many times was pass interference ever going to be called in that game? <laughs> Even on Henry Ruggs' touchdown, whomever was covering him was it might as well have been giving him a bear hug on the play for just how much Henry Ruggs is being held. Uh, on that touchdown play, uh, but just the uh, just the inconsistency, just the overall incompetence in general with the officiating was my ugly. The bad, the fair catch uh, by Brian Robinson uh, on that kickoff for Oklahoma from the ten yard line that gave Bama the ball at their own what twenty one twenty two yard line, and then of course the good. I mean, look, Tua Tonga Vailoa on target, nearly perfect as far as his. Uh, passing uh, accuracy is completion percentage. Uh, sem- you get starts and ends as far as the good with Mr. Tua tonga All right, that's James Hardy, the producer, giving you his good, bad, and ugly. Hey, if you didn't get to call your good, bad, and ugly in, you can call it at 205-342-9904 on the Taco Casa hotline. I'm going to go ahead and save mine to the other side of the break, and then we'll also have a little – SEC Bowl edition of Good, Bad, and Ugly. Did you see anything ugly out there? Yeah, I'm saving something for uh, that. Um, Just kind of a surprise and shocker from yesterday. Uh, But we'll talk about that more right here on The Blitz on Tide 102.9 and 100.9. All right, we're going to break Good, Bad, and Ugly. Man, the ugly, I'm going to hit the ugly real quick for Alabama uh, and uh, Oklahoma and then, James, I want you to be thinking about what was your good, bad, and ugly potential from bowl week. But the ugly to me was, was kind of threefold, and I think they kind of they kind of escalated. I think the officiating, first of all, was absolutely horrible. And I hate to think that the officiating from the ACC crew had anything to do with making it look like it was a more competitive game than it really was. But the officiating <clears throat> from the holding – to the pass interference, uh, to the, I'm sorry, the lack of holding calls uh, and the pass interference. And then from there, did that, did the ugly, did that lead to some of the behavior or the frustration you saw uh, from the Alabama players? Were some of the Alabama players, because they played, some of the things they did were not customary of Alabama football, Alabama football players. So was that the case? Did Alabama somehow, some way get frustrated with the officiating and that led to some of the missed assignments and, and the frustration there? Because there was there were several bad plays by Alabama that extended drives that led to touchdowns for Oklahoma. The bad to me um, was a fair catch. Uh, don't don't understand what was going on with that. Don't know if he. I don't know what he did. I I, I really would love to hear an explanation of, of that particular fair catch because to me that swung momentum. It changed the the flow of the game, and from that point on, Oklahoma <laughs> did outscores. Uh, but uh, you know, Georgia last night outscored. Um, I think Texas too. After you know, Georgia won the game fourteen to eleven after they went down seventeen to nothing. You know, so Kirby Smart should be happy that after the first quarter of getting their butts whooped, um, they <laughs> isn't that what Lincoln Riley told us about the Orange Bowl? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's that's my point. So, <laughs> but another bad was the play, um, the play by um, Sertain. But I'm not going to put that all on Sertain. I think some of that was we had to give up something, and that was something we gave. It, it, you go back and look. And I know that this sounds crazy, but I believe that they felt like Oklahoma could get some deep balls, and so they played off. Uh, they didn't do as much press on Lamb, uh, and as a result, it, it, it kept some drives alive, James. But if you're making Oklahoma take five minutes to score every time and you're playing with the three-score cushion each drive, I'm not sure that wasn't all um, – Certain. I, I'm not sure some of that wasn't part of the game plan because we never pressed. We never put anybody over the top to give him a chance to take that away. And he also uh, got away, Lamb, I'm speaking of, got away with a couple push-offs in that game. So 
I know some people are concerned about Sertain going into this game against Clemson. I'm not as concerned because I don't think you'll have to have as many people in the box to contain the running game for um, uh, contain Lawrence in the running game on the scrambles. So I believe they'll be able to drop a linebacker underneath to stop that slant. Uh, and I also think they'll be, they feel like he'll be able to press some. So I just think the defense will be a little bit different uh, in terms of that. So I'm not worried about Satane, but it was bad, especially that one drive where he ended up giving up the touchdown. And the good was the way Alabama came out and played the game uh, and then their ability to flip the script in the second half and become a totally different team that ran the clock. They, they jumped out 28 nothing, doing what they do all year. Then they showed that uh, even though it may have been a, a weak Oklahoma team, they still were able to become a different style team. Uh, and keep the lead. I mean, guys, th- that game was not close as 11 points, but we'll, we'll go from there. Uh, we're going to get Gregory in real quick to get his good, bad, and ugly. Uh, and then we'll have <laughs> good, bad, and ugly from the bowl games. Uh, so, James, think about that for a second. Gregory in with the Blitz. What's on your mind, man? Uh, I like to start off saying Happy New Year and the Roll Tide to you, Mark. Happy New Year and Roll Tide to you as well. Well, they did they, my thing. You, everybody know the referee you know we're messing up the game. <laughs> and then yeah. you know, uh, while well, well, I was finna talk about our defense. Go ahead. You know, the first and second, like you said, you just got to talking about it. We did good, but when we uh, 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 slacked up, you know, what I'm saying not putting no pressure on that quarterback, you know, we're gonna give him enough time, you know, to find his wide right receivers. Yeah. Now everybody, you know, everybody saying they worry. Yes, and if we come up with that. Any quarterback got time to throw the ball and be a good mobile. I mean, a uh, passer. They're gonna they're gonna strike on them. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Now, if we can start off like we did when we when the game first started off in the first quarter, putting the pressure on him, get to the quarterback, sacking him, all the way through the game for sixty minutes. What Nick Tatum keep on praying about? 60 minutes, you know what I'm saying? We the game over with. Do you that think do you with. do you think that uh Christian Miller's injury, number one, uh number two, the lead that Alabama built, uh, and the fact that Alabama didn't have to take chances, and they they employed the exact same strategy on both sides of the ball. And I hadn't heard a lot of people talk about this. We we're gonna run the clock on offense, uh, and take oh, okay. and take the air out of the ball. And I believe defensively. We were we were we were playing not to give up big plays. If Oklahoma was gonna score, they were gonna have to drive. Think about Oklahoma having they're down they're down by three scores and they're taking five yeah. minutes to drive to score. They can't come back. I mean, if they were scoring the way they normally score, then I would have been worried. But even when they were having their offensive success, it was because we we extended several drives because of bonehead plays where we made right. penalties. And number two, mm-hmm. we were making them go five, seven, six, twelve, five, seven, and, and so uh, it, it was almost like <clears throat> that was part of the strategy. But I do think that when Christian Miller went out with that injury, mm-hmm. it gave a okay. lot more flexibility to him to run around and scramble because when they tried to put Anthony Jennings on the spy, he just couldn't do okay. it. And I think Christian Miller okay. made him stay in the pocket a little bit more. Okay, well, see, what you say on both sides of the field, now, you know, talking about moving, you know, I think that would cost us two because that slowed up our momentum. You know what I'm saying? I would. I think we intentionally case, sold know, our momentum down. I think we intentionally. It's wrong. <laughs> that's wrong. Anytime you, you want to take the scribe out of your player, what would the best at, you're going to have problems. You know, let's keep it like it was. Let's keep on driving and scoring and keep putting the pressure on on, on, on the offense. We won't have this type of conversation, Mark. <laughs> so, so you're not you're not you happy with that. You're not happy with that 11 point victory that should have been 18. I'm not happy with the uh, play calling and the play de- uh, decision. You know, you give anybody <clears throat> time to throw the ball or uh, anything. You know, they're going to strike. That's all I'm saying. We can go back, you know, and I can just show you, you know, okay, now now we're in trouble. The do you, point, think, do you no. think we could have scored any time we wanted to? 
Do you think they were yes. ever – do you think – see, we, we say it was the 11-point game, but the reality of it is we had the ball to make it 18. And if we had made it 18, then they would have had to come down and score again, and then we got the ball back. We scored – we scored seven out of nine drives and could have scored eight out of ten drives. Right. I, you okay. Know, so, you so, the, so okay. were they ever going to catch us at that pace? At that pace, if we played two more at that pace, we would have played, you know, another yeah. game, and they still we would have went sixteen for twenty on drive scoring okay. drives, and they they still would have needed. That many more drives at the way we were playing, they would have needed an, another full game to close it to a tie okay. game, and then we would have had the ball for another possession let if they tied it up. Then. So, all right, let me ask you one question: the outside kick. If they would got the ball back on the outside, the kick onside kick, and, scored, and came back up and made, uh, you know, it would have uh, made it a points, three point game know? or a seven point game, and then they okay. would have had to come out and stop us. Which they oh, had yeah. not done. Okay, I, I'm gonna <laughs> ride with you, Mark. I'm I, I mean, I mean, yeah, it, it, it could have gotten there. It could have gotten there. I mean, you know. but, but, but it didn't. Onside kicks are uh, they're scary, yeah. but they seldom go your way. Even though, even though we got one against Clemson, uh, yeah, it, it, it was right. we got the one against Clemson when they wasn't expecting it. Right. You see what I'm saying? You know, we were expecting that onside so. kick. So they yeah, very seldom you know, go your way, even when you surprise a team. Uh, they mm. they hardly hardly ever go your way when the team is expecting. I understand I what you're saying. I, I would have been fine if we okay. had kept scoring, though. Don't get me wrong. I, right. I would have been fine if we had just yeah. <laughs> kept scoring. Hey, I got to get the break here. You got anything else for oh. me? You, you got a prediction yet, or are you going to save it? Uh, um, uh, I better save it, Mark. All right, uh, man. Um, I, I don't know what type of team we're gonna come out and play, man. All right, I gotta get a little bit. All right, road tide, man. Road tide. Happy New Year, Gregory. All right, all right. The good, bad, and ugly from the bowl week. Some people talking about. Well, does Alabama or uh, does SEC teams not want to be at the bowl game? I, I don't think we can use that excuse on Georgia. I, I mean, I know we're gonna. We can't change the narrative. Georgia wanted to be the best team in the country, wanted to be one of the top four. They were going against a team that that was beaten by a team that made it in the Final Four. I know you don't always take head-to-head type of comparisons, but Georgia got embarrassed last night, and they wanted to be there. Now, they did miss a couple of good players. Don't get me wrong. Uh, you know, Brown not being there did hurt, but uh, Texas took it to them, and – if I'm in the Big 12, I'm looking out for Texas. Uh, Tom Herman seems to be getting things rolling there uh, with the Texas Longhorn. And if he recruit well, hey, who knows? Texas may be a contender once again. And that's all they'll be as a contender, even though they think more highly of themselves than they ought to. But Jumbo wants to talk about the good, bad, and ugly. Jumbo, welcome into the Blitz. What's on your mind, man? Hey, Martin, it's a pleasure to talk to you. It's the first time I've ever talked to you, but uh, I uh, enjoyed watching you play when you was at Bama in the 90s. Uh, Thank so, you. Uh, it's kind of quite an honor this morning to talk to you. I appreciate that. Thanks for listening, and thanks for calling in. Yeah, um, I think uh, – I'm going to jump on the committee right quick. I think they got it right. I don't think Georgia um, should have been in the playoffs. I don't care what anybody says. Um. They got, you know, they got embarrassed, like you said last night, and um, so I think the committee got it right. Um, I think they're, they're another year they did a good job. Last year they definitely put the four best teams in, and I think they did this year too. But my good and bad and ugly was some some of the officiating in these bowl games were really bad, especially the um, yeah. Alabama game. So some of our players got beat up. Yeah, it was the officiating has been bad overall. If you kind of that was kind of my bowl. Ugly as well. It was kind of bad. Now, the Rose Bowl yesterday, I, I actually felt like the SEC crew did a, a really good job. Um, <laughs> you know, it's kind of I'm, funny, Jeff. I was like, oh, my God, the SEC may have the best officials, and we've complained about them all year. That's what I was thinking watching the Rose Bowl. <laughs> I, was, um, I was impressed with them. They did. They did a good job. Um, my good is – the fact that Alabama jumped out on Oklahoma like it did. And I agree with your last caller. I think we could have scored at will. Um, 
I do admit, I think they let up off the gas pedal. And I think the defense kind of let down, too. I remember Bugs made a statement about that, and I agreed with him. Um, you know, we've got to play the full 60 minutes in defense. And you you being on the 92 championship team, you knew how the defense was there. Yeah. So they had to stay, you know, you had to stay at it for 60 minutes. And, and that's really one of the best two defenses I think we've well that we've ever had. So, um, and let's say the good, the bad, and the ugly, <laughs> I'm going to go back with, with, you know, Kyler Murray. I didn't want him winning the Heisman. Um, but, you know, the kids are dead gum good quarterbacks. Yeah. It, oh, um, he, he was definitely in. I mean, you, you, you uh, uh, anybody other than Bama probably is okay with Kyler Murray <laughs> winning the, yeah. the Heisman, especially after what he did to Alabama's defense. So, yeah, but Martin, when that kid turned on the Jets, I mean, it was like afterburners on the F fourteen, brother. He was gone. Yeah, he could take. I mean, he he takes off full speed. That, I mean, that that's, kid ain't that's, no that, joke. Yeah, he takes off full speed. That's what's impressive uh, to me is that he takes off full speed. So. And then, of course, the, the, the ugly, or is that going to be the ugly or the bad? Um, yeah, that's fine. Whatever you want to call it. <laughs> <laughs> our our fans started hollering overrated when it was 21 to nothing. Yeah. Uh, and I had to listen to the ball on the radio, and I was hearing it over the radio. Um, and I was really disappointed in that because I felt like it was not classy of us because we've been there so many times and, you know, we, we are the pinnacle of that, or college football because we are the team to beat. And um, yeah. I just felt like our fans did a poor job of that, and, and they shouldn't have done that. And, you know, it seems like after they'd done that, Connor kind of kicked it in a little bit and started playing football. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I was impressed with that, uh, Jumbo, and uh, with with the way they fought back. But I, I still don't think there was ever any any realistic chance that they were going to come back and beat Bama. Uh, in that game, so you got anything else for me, man? And I appreciate. It. Where are you calling from? I'm I'm out here in Duncanville. I'm headed to work. Okay, um, awesome. I'm, I'm doing a five hour shift this morning just to kind of stay ahead of things. But uh, <laughs> my my one thing to throw out there is Go I ahead. just want to let everybody let everybody realize that um, you know we haven't done it too good in the bowl season this year, but um, Kentucky looked really good, um, and I felt like Florida. It's fixing to take over the East. I really feel that they are fixing to give Georgia a run for the money, and I would not be surprised if Florida knocks off Georgia this year and they go to the SEC uh, championship. I would not be surprised. They definitely fended in, ended in different directions, and and that's one of the big things going into the offseason is how you end the season. It can definitely catapult you into a better year. So I wouldn't be surprised with that. Um, I'm not ready to dethrone Georgia, but I'm also not as sold on Georgia as everyone else was. Right. All, All right, right, Mark. Well, you have a great day. Uh, happy New Year, buddy. And, uh, again, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thanks. Call back anytime, Jumbo. Yes, sir. Roll All tight. Right. Roll tight. All right, Robert, thanks for your patience, man. What you got for me? Hey, man. Hey. Yeah, I was definitely disappointed with Georgia last, Georgia last night. Woo. Hey, no, no, no Robert. <laughs> Now, now, people are coming back saying, well, they didn't want to be there. That's not what they were saying on, on Twitter. That's not what they were saying on social media. Kirby Smart learned a big lesson about m- managing his team and, and everything because they were talking smack. Well, the committee got it wrong. We're going to show them. Well, yeah. that's why I say that don't compare this to the Utah-Alabama because this Georgia team felt like they should have been in and they had something to prove. Alabama knew that there was nothing they could do once they lost to Florida, and they did not want to be in that Utah game. So, but we'll see what happens. Go ahead. Yeah, that you're absolutely right. It's you, know, so you, you guys wanted to, I mean, you got something to prove for the next year, for next year, you know, and you, and you laid an egg like that. It's, it was highly disappointing. I gave him a good, bad, and ugly on Monday, but of course, the good was uh, Tua and. If he's not 100%, goodness gracious when he gets just 100%. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, it's the two, uh, and, of course, the bad was the officiating and the defense allowing Kyler, although Kyler Murray is special, allowing Kyler Murray to come back. And the ugly, of course, is our, our punting. It's our, our kicking game is just, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's ugly. Uh, you, got, you asked about uh, Trevor Lawrence's uh, freshman moment. He has already had his freshman moment. People tend to forget about it. What's that? It's Texas A&M. It's against Texas A&M. Oh, yeah, because he got benched. I forgot about that. Right. Kelly Bryant, if he hadn't been on that field, on that, had been that on that team, they would have lost to Texas A&M. They still should have lost to Texas A&M. The referees helped them out. Texas, uh, Clemson out of 
whole lot with some strange calls. <laughs> but the, the, they lose to Texas A and M if uh, if Kelly Bryant's not on that is not on that team. Good, he's already point. had his good point. Moment. Hopefully, he has and, another one in him though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think he does have another one. <laughs> and I, I've been trolling people online about uh, you know the Clemson game, and in that it, two they play two SEC quarterbacks who are not nearly as good as Tua, and they've given up a ton of yards passing to both of them. Uh, yeah, 400, 400 and 500, right? Yeah, 400 and 500. So <laughs> Ouch. this is not an even – and people want to think that it's not evenly matched. Alabama's a superior team. Of course, superior teams lose all the time. It happens. We've, Alabama's always been a superior team. We've lost games. So it, it can happen. But if Tua continues to play like he's playing, it, there's, I'm to the, I just don't see it. Alabama losing to if, if these those two guys got five hundred over four hundred yards passing on Clemson. Uh, how is Tua not going to unless we get a bunch of drop passes or he hurts the, uh, the ankle again? Or I don't see how we got better receivers and uh, the better quarterback. So I mean that line is good, but apparently the secondary has some problems. Yes, I agree give, with that. Oh, that many yards to that many to those you know average quarterbacks at best. Right. And I agree with that. I I don't think this Clemson team is as good uh, from front to back on defense. And I don't think they're – I think they're good on offense, but I don't think that they're Deshaun Watson good. I mean, the the, the thing that that, that if you go back – and Alabama plays defense the way they played against Oklahoma, those are sacks against Trevor Lawrence. I mean, Murray just escaped. Deshaun Watson escaped. Can Trevor Lawrence escape? And I don't think so. And Murray was escaping through just small cracks. And yes, the line. I mean, it was like, gosh, uh, if you were uh, if you were a, a couple of inches wider, you don't get through that. Yeah. <laughs> but, or, 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 but he does. Or, or, or a tenth of a tenth of a hundredth of a tenth of a second slower. When he takes off, he's full speed. I mean, that's it. That was the most. That's the most amazing thing about him. When you pressure him. When he takes off, he's full speed. Hey, Robert, I'm going to have to get out of here, man. I got to get to my next table. But uh, you, thanks for reminding me about that, Kelly. Uh, I mean, Trevor Lawrence moment. And uh, I think that we can give him another one uh, next Monday. Okay, buddy. All right. Thanks, Robert. All right. A couple quick things as we go to break here before we get to that is uh, C.J. Watson brought up the OU Alabama game in the Sugar Bowl. I still don't think that's the same. That was after the Auburn kick six, right? I mean, you know, that 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 was after the Auburn kick six, and that was pre-college football playoffs? Pre-college football playoffs. That Alabama team would have made the college football playoffs. I mean, uh and so I think the I think the difference in this Georgia game is the fact that Georgia could have been voted in by a committee and felt like they were snubbed. The Alabama times there, Alabama was there because they lost a game that they felt like they should have won. That reminds me of a bowl season ugly for me, Martin. Yeah, Purdue it, fifty six points and a half. Yeah, fifty six. So that 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 would be another. And one other thing is, uh, Virgil Williams brought up the L- LSU UCF game. Listen, any team in in Division One, virtually any good team in in Division One, whether it's UCF or Boise State, can win a one off game. And that's why I don't like the UCF being in a national championship hunt because they could win. The, they could win the championship. That UCF team with Milton is good enough to win, but they couldn't do it if they had to play a season all year because they would lose multiple games. When you get a month to practice, th- those UCFs and Boise, they always won the bowl game or the opening game of the season. They never upset these teams when they play them in the regular season. And that's because they don't get that much practice time. So, yes, UCF is a legit team that would be better than some of the lower-tier SEC Big Five teams, but they're not ready to play week in and week out uh, the SEC. But they are better than, than what you probably think they are. And LSU did have eight starters out. Tell them about it, JoJo. <laughs> so, there you go. Hey, let's get the break here. 